<laughs> a very good morning from the skies of Doha. It's sunrise here in the basket. We've got me from England. Good morning. We've got France. Bonjour. We've got Spain. Hola. And we've got Poland. This is S Boys News. So what a beautiful start to the day here in Doha. It's the Qatar Balloon Festival and I promise you we'll be back at this event twice during this program with great pilots and content. But now let's move not so far from here but to the United Arab Emirates where the Dubai International Parachuting Championships are taking place right now and we have some fresh results right for you. The event was postponed last year because of the pandemic restrictions, but now pilots are competing with smiles on their faces and we have some first scoreboard details from Dubai. In the combined team national classification, USA is in the lead having almost 300 points advantage on the Russian Federation and more than 500 on the Czech Republic team. In the overall individual results, including three disciplines of canopy piloting, accuracy, distance and speed, Cedric Vriego-Ross from France is in the lead. In the second place is Kurt Bartholomew from the USA. And in third, Cordelia Mihai flying for the UAE. The event will end on the 17th of December and we'll get back to you with all the final results. <sighs> So Christmas is coming, yes it is, and on this occasion, for the second time, the great paramotor pilot Wojciech Bogdal has made several Christmas flights above his hometown in Poland, with fireworks and Santa's sledges and even reindeer. Wojciech made several low passes over the local Aero Club airfield and also above the city of Plosk. Dozens of happy kids waved to him and screamed and I'm sure many of them actually really believe that this was the real Santa Claus flying around. Congratulations Wojciech for this heartwarming event. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. So let's get back to Doha. Today we have a bunch of interviews with amazing hot air balloon pilots participating in the Qatar Balloon Festival. Firstly, we have Paul Dobson and Steve Wilkinson. Let's check in with Paul Dobson here. Paul, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very well, thank you. What's happening? Well, it's a, it's a little too windy to free fly this morning, so we are uh, tethering some balloons. And you've been doing a little bit of coaching here with the local crew. We have indeed. Um, uh, tethering gives us the ideal opportunity to show the balloon, show the local crew how the balloons work. Yeah. Uh, so just demonstrating that the heat makes the balloon go up. Uh, as you'll see, the balloon's going to move around quite a bit because of the the wind. So it's just to show them how the and the actual balloon flies. You were saying this is one of the best ways of learning while you're tethered. It's a great way of coaching. They learn uh, how to balance the balloon. It's all about uh, keeping the balloon in equilibrium. Just keeping it above the ground is a great way to practice flying straight and level. Actually, you. You've done a lot of stories in, in ballooning, my friend. Well, uh, I've been in ballooning for this year is 40 years. Wow. Been all over the world. I've been lucky enough to uh, fly celebrities and uh, little kids in countries that have no money and just uh, some imagination is what I'm trying to give them. And, and so it's just been a wonderful, uh, wonderful life for us. Based out of Palm Springs? Based out of Palm Springs, California. Yeah, wow. What's it like out there? It must be... A a completely different way of ballooning, isn't it? Or uh, it, it's a little fantasy land, of course. Uh, we have uh, mountains that are over 10,000 feet uh, behind us, and then we uh, drop down into the uh, Salton Sea, which is 235 feet below sea level. So, just quite a beautiful area. So, you want to know a little bit more from Paul and Steve? Just find the full interview on our Air Sports Promotion YouTube channel, and we'll get back to Qatar very soon. <laughs> The Drone Racing League has announced this week that it has earned FAA accreditation and will become the first unmanned aircraft systems event organiser. DRL is sharing its expertise in drone event safety more widely with the industry and continuing to work with venue organisers to create safe and spectacular drone racing experiences throughout the most unique and incredible spaces. 
Additionally, the DRL will join the FAA's Partnership for Safety Plan Programme, an initiative by the FAA to support the further safe integration of drone technology and services. The FAA launched the PSP initiative in December 2016 to address and advance complex UAS operational capabilities. All right, we're staying in the uh, world of drone racing right now, but we're changing the title to the Drones Champions League. And because for most of the time we're talking about male pilots, this time we want to show you the latest virtual races in China provided by the best female pilots in action. Take a look. From there again, Emily Sonoto just has China all to herself, even though that corkscrew is not something she's going to be proud of. Through the annoying gate and in for yet another win, Evan de Soto with Raiden Racing, the champions of the DCL Women's Cup for 2021. Congratulations to Evan de Soto. Last week we showed you new wings from Ozone Paragliding and this time we have great news for Paramotor fans. A new wing from a Dudek company dedicated for powered flights and it's called the Snake 3. The Snake 3 is a challenging slalom wing for top competitors, very fast with dynamic turns and exceptional resistance to collapse. The design and testing process lasted a record five years. It is structurally derived from the drift air, but its parameters are similar to its predecessor, the Snake XX. The leading edge is stiffened with synthetic rods of the Flexi Edge technology, distinctly improving launch quality and guarding against collapse at high speeds. The actual Polish champion, Lojajk Kazareski, prepared some stunning videos showing this new product. Now let's do some test flights in the world of sailplanes and electric gliders. The first one comes straight from Namibia in Africa, where German pilot Stefan Langer is going through his training camp and last week he had the privilege to test the twin shark glider, providing stunning shots from his flights. The second interesting news for the gliding enthusiasts is the Atos Wing Electric Glider from the Air Atos Company. This tiny construction is an electric touring motor glider of the 120 kilograms ultralight class. The construction of this wing is based on the Atos Wing, which has been tried and tested for over 20 years and is consistently being further developed. With two batteries on board, this tiny little bird can fly up to 300 kilometers and using thermals on the way it can stay airborne for many many hours it's time to get back to my special guest this week and straight from the aspire park in doha where i caught up with two more great hot air balloon pilots igor mikulicic and jonathan dyer the team from croatia igor's here good morning igor hey good morning everybody how are you pretty good I'm loving your social media content. Well, thank you. Very, very nice indeed. Well, we, 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 we try. Yeah. So what's happening? Tell me about what, what you're doing here. So yeah, we, um, this is our second time here uh, for this balloon. Um, we were here in 2019 with a different crew, um, but this balloon was here already. So we're happy to be here again. That's a very special balloon for us. It's a balloon of Varazin County. It's a county in Croatia. Right. And the whole balloon is pretty unique. It's a painting of our very famous painter, Ivan Rabuzin. So it's a flying artwork and um, it's called the Celebration of Flowers. So if you see it in the air, uh, we hope to bring out a couple of smiles um, on uh, people's faces. Tell, tell us what you do, Jenny. Uh, I'm semi-retired now. I do a bit of work with the army. I'm a specialist reserve in the British army. Um, I'm a former police officer and regular soldier. And um, in my, my, my main hobby is hot air ballooning. Yeah. And I'm an instructor and flight examiner. And with uh, 
with other people, I maintain balloons. You've done a few skydiving in your past as well, eh? Yes, that's how I got into ballooning. Uh, I was very lucky to be in the British Army parachute team, the Red Devils. Yes. Back in the uh, back in the nineties, actually, and we did some stunts with hot air balloons, and I loved it because hot air balloons are very inclusive. It means anyone can join in. Uh, it, I, I've never found anything more exciting. I've, I find it more exciting even than skydiving. Yeah. So all four interviews with my flying guests this week are in one set and you can find them right now on our YouTube channel. All right, now hold on tight with this latest funny video. The question is, what do you need to know when piloting or flying a Cessna aircraft? You need to know how to use the yoke, the rudder, the throttle. Well, not necessarily. The only thing you need to know is how to open the windows in flight. I want to turn right. I'll just close the right window. The aircraft will yaw to the right, which induces a right bank. And when I get to the bank I want, I can hold it there. If I want to level out, I'll just close my left window. And I'll level out. With both windows open, there's a slight nose up pitch, because that's where I've established it. If I want to descend, I'll just bring both windows in and close them. And the nose will slowly drop into a descent. Feels like week after week we have fresh news from the world of eVTOL aircraft. Practically every single day somewhere on the planet new aviation ideas are born. And this one is really interesting. The African startup doesn't even have a mock-up of their product yet, but their marketing ideas is really cool. Let's, let's take a look. So they came up with the idea of a PAV, personal aerial vehicle for those unfamiliar with the vocabulary. Inspired by the efficiency of our fellow flying creatures, they designed the aircraft with some really unique features. It is 100% electric with an inherently safe design, unlike other flying cars where the safety is borderline. The Paradactyl is a South African startup company on a quest to bring sustainable mobility to Africa. They are currently working on the development of a personal aerial vehicle. The project is also aimed at solving many other critical transportation challenges on this continent. This is especially relevant in the African context where the land-based transport infrastructure is not that well developed, but it really looks cool. All right, it's time to get to our Hall of Fame section. On the 11th of December 1917, Catherine Stinton flew her custom-built Curtis Stinson Special from Rockwell Field, North Island, San Diego to the Presidio of San Francisco, a distance of 606 miles in 9 hours and 10 minutes. This was a new American distance record. After the flight, she said that she had never had any fear and the main thing in her head was just speed. On the 11th of December 1959, Brigadier General Joseph Moore set an FEI world speed record when he flew a Republic Thunder Chief aircraft over a 100 km closed circuit at Edwards Air Force Base, California. The Thunder Chief averaged 1,878 km per hour. Also on the 11th of December 1951, the first helicopter powered by a gas turbine engine made its first flight at the Cayman Aircraft Company plant at Bloomfield, Connecticut. Using a K-225 tandem rotor helicopter, Cayman replaced the 220 horsepower Lycoming reciprocating engine with a Boeing 502 2E turboshaft engine. This engine could produce 175 continuous horsepower, less than its piston engine it replaced, but it also weighed considerably less. On the 13th of December 1972, NASA astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Smith became the last people to walk on the surface of the moon at the Taurus Littoral Valley. This was the final EVA of the Apollo program, lasting approximately 7 hours and 15 minutes. Then Harrison H. Schmidt and Gene Cernan climbed up into the Lunar Module Challenger to prepare to lift off the following day. Gene Cernan was the last man to stand on the surface of the moon. And we'll see you back again next week for Air Sports News, but a big thank you for me, Rio Thank you, Doha. Thank you, Guitar.